Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> known each other for 12 years and instantly we became best friends so I went to Hawaii and got my master's in social work. Jess and I still stayed in contact. And it was winter in Utah and so I was just like man I need something different and Rhonda was in Hawaii and so she was like dude move out here and live on the couch. We played all day we had fun I went to school about a year later the guy that I was dating actually broke up with me and like completely shattered my heart. But the funny thing was is in July before when you were dating is when I kind of fell in love with you. And I was like, this is really weird. <laughs> we both had the same feelings, but we didn't know at the same time. And then we went to a concert in September of that year, and I ended up telling Jess how I felt, and I said the words, I like us. And she completely like giggled, laughed, laughed rolled and over. Jess was like, and uh -huh. I was like, oh no, what did I do? So I woke up in the morning like, maybe she just won't remember. So we just brushed it off and didn't say anything again. And we just went back to like, what are like flirtatious selves, but also like trying to still be friends. And then we went to Denver for a football game because mm -hmm. I'm a Giants fan and Rhonda's a Broncos fan. And then after the game, Rhonda tried to kiss me in the bathroom. <laughs> and I was like, we're not having this first kiss in the bathroom. Of <laughs> and the cap stalled. <laughs> So we went outside and we went outside of the stadium and I found, we were walking by the fountains and, and I kissed her for the first time. It was cute. It was a moment we'll never forget. <laughs> As it got closer to Christmas, we both had to like come to terms with it and tell our families and we started to tell friends. My family definitely was the hardest, mainly like my grandparents and my dad weren't most supportive. Fast forward to March of that next year and my dad, my dad like tragically passed away. I grieved my dad's death obviously for months after that and it was six months later, Jess found a lump and she didn't tell me about it but it was about six months later that we found out she was diagnosed with breast cancer. I couldn't be sad about my dad anymore. Like I had to now be that rock for Jess. Went through all the Fun stuff, did the double mastectomy, did the chemo. Going through cancer is hard and a lot of couples don't make it out of this. Mm -hmm. And to be in only in a year into our relationship, nothing changed out of us. Each one of us was each other's rock. That year went by really fast. It was a crazy year. I feel like it went by really slow. Well, there was a lot that happened. Like I could not get rid of that year fast enough. <laughs> So anyways, we love country music. Garth Brooks was coming to Salt Lake City. He did like a special showing for like his dive bar tour. So. Yeah, so and it was one of our favorite bars. She got the tickets. And I won the tickets and so I was like, well, there's no other better time. I gotta go get, I'm gonna propose, I'm gonna propose at the concert. I, every time like Rhonda went to like go get a beer or went to somewhere, I would tell people around me like, I'm gonna propose tonight. And so everybody was in on it around us except Rhonda. I had no idea. I was oblivious. <laughs> I was just stoked to be at this concert. Rhonda doesn't really like to dance, but she'll definitely get on the dance floor for Boot Scoot and Boogie. So I got the DJ to play Boot Scoot and Boogie. And then afterwards I have play our song. And so we danced and at the end of the song, it says, get down, get down on one knee and me. ask her to marry me. So I got down on one knee and I've always joked around. And so when I got down, she was like, whatever. Uh, she I, does it all at that time. So for me, I'm like, hey, get up. <laughs> and she stood, and then I saw the glisten, and I was like, oh, is that real? I don't think I even said yes. I no, was like, shut start. up, shut up. <laughs> and then you started crying. And then I cried, and then you were like, well, you're going to say yes. And then I screamed and danced. It was great. It was cute. It was fun. So after doing the double mastectomy and losing the boobs it was definitely a self-conscious thing because as being a woman you all identify with our boobs right it's part of our body it took me almost about a year and a half or so after having the surgery of just being comfortable with my body so going and thinking about a wedding and wedding dresses just kind of put that fear of like what am i gonna look like how's it gonna fit my cousin works for maggie and so I called her up and we came up with a game plan and gave me ideas. Putting on the dresses and going through those dresses that we did, it made it easier. Because the form of the dress is kind of like fitted 
So it made me also confident. And the ones that I have that I tried on felt secure around here that I was not as worried. It was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> it like turned out, the fury went away and it turned out just being fun. Emotionally, it was a lot harder than I thought. I remember like talking about the appointment and for whatever reason, it was like the reality hit. Like, oh my God, I'm really doing this. I'm really getting married. And the reality of doing it without my dad here or really like a supportive family that day was, I had a lot of anxiety because I, I didn't emotionally know what to expect. Um, I My first thought was like, I don't know how people find one wedding dress. I wanted to try, <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. These are all my dresses. Trying on the dresses were easy. Like I felt like a princess. It was so much fun. The cool thing about like the wedding dresses is I feel like they, it didn't matter the style. You just felt beautiful in all of them. And I had a little bit of FOMO. I always thought I would be like cluckers made of honor, not her wife. <laughs> so I like the whole time I was trying on dresses too. I was like, oh, I wonder what she's wearing. Or like, what does hers look like? So it's all, that was also fun for me. Try not to put so much pressure on yourself. I think we do that enough as it is. People, I think, are too worried about what other people are thinking instead of just having fun. Just don't be hard on yourself. I think more than anything as you're planning your wedding, everyone says this and it's very cliche, but do what you want. Don't listen to other people. Do what you want, go with your heart. Um, Jess and I have had so much fun planning it. We're going to Mexico for our wedding. Um, we finally made the decision <laughs> and we definitely don't regret it and we're really excited. I think the other piece is just have, pick your best friend. I'm very, very lucky that I get to marry my best friend and that I was lucky enough to fall in love with her and for her to feel the same. Ditto. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Sorry.